Right, in this video I'm going to show you several sets of high quality, low cost tools you can actually get for the metalwork lathe. I use these tools on both my Chinese mini lathe and my Myford ML7. And although these are new tools on the table here, I have had sets of these from when I first bought my Chinese mini lathe probably 8 to 10 years ago. And before Banggood came along, I used to actually buy these from various different companies in Britain and they were probably triple the price than what they are now. So if you've just bought a Chinese mini lathe or any other lathe really and you're getting into machining and you want to know the best tools to actually buy to get started, these are the ones. But they're not something that you'll get rid of over time and get better ones. You'll actually use these throughout your machining career and you'll just add to them as you go. But I'm showing these so that you can actually get started and having these tools here would give you the ability to make great components or great things like um, this little oil lamp here which I showed in my previous video. You could actually make that with these tools on this table. And in a moment I'll show you some of these tools in use on the Chinese mini lathe and what you can actually use them for. So the first set is this 100 piece titanium coated HSS drill set and it ranges from 1.5 millimeter to 10 millimeter in diameter and the cobalt drills are normally twice the price of um, this set so it's actually worth getting this set if you want to keep your costs down and at the moment I think they're on special offer on the site so if you have a look on the link below you'll see what an amazingly low price they're being sold for next we have this set here made by Matchifit and all these tools take the same insert which is the DCMT 070204 insert so having these tools uh, is great saving on buying um, different inserts for different tools they come in these proper toolboxes and each have their own key to um, take out the Torx screw to change the insert or turn it round and it comes with a set of 10 inserts as well the titanium coated ones with the small radius and you will have seen me using these tools on my Chinese mini lathe and my MyFed lathe. Um, this is the main one that I use and I'll be showing you um, what you can actually do with it. This is for turning back the other way, same tool. And then you have um, this one here which you can use for decorative grooves or whatever. And then you have a nice size boring bar with the same insert. And you will be amazed at all the different operations you can use these tools for and the various different components you can make using them. And what I really like about these tools is the actual shape of this insert. It's nice and long and narrow and it's a great tool for actually turning a thread diameter then plunging straight in and doing the thread undercut and facing down the back shoulder here so you don't have to keep changing tools from a turning tool to an undercut tool and you can also do that with the um, boring bar as well you can actually turn down the bore for a thread or whatever to the core diameter and then you can actually plunge in at the back and even go down the back face to create the undercut for the internal thread. So next on the list we have this excellent spiral screw tap um, thread set and it's HSS with nitride coating and this is a metric right hand set from M3 to M12. And in my lifetime of engineering, these are about the best screw taps or they are just as good as any screw tap that I've actually ever used, even the top brand ones. And these tools here, you can actually just do the core diameter for the thread, 
put these in the tailstock chuck and then push the tailstock down, meet up with the core diameter and let the machine take the tap into the work and it'll go straight through without any problems. And you may have seen me using these on the um, things that I've been making recently and what I like about it is you can actually let them go straight through like I say and then go straight into reverse on the machine and let it come back out again and then you'll have a perfectly formed thread or perfectly cut thread. And I could actually tell straight away when I opened these by the actual quality, the way they've been ground and the finish and everything about them that they were going to be a really brilliant set. Next we have these MGEHR groove tools. Some people say that they're part-off tools and you can actually use them for parting off small work. But they are groove tools and I actually use these for um, cutting o-ring grooves or circlet grooves. And you can get various different widths of these tools and different shank sizes obviously. This is a 12mm one and this is a 10mm one which I shall use on my MyFed ML7. And I actually think these ones are new out at the moment. I haven't seen them before. They're 1.5mm width insert. So the tool is actually designed to take that width insert. And then you can actually get one in 2mm and one in 3mm. And the great thing about carbide insert tooling like this is that when you actually change an insert the centre height remains the same as does the cutting distance. Whereas if you make up your own tools either using carbide brazed on tips or HSS tooling when you uh, take that tool out of the tool post or whatever, you regrind it, you may alter the centre height, but you definitely have to reset the tool when you put it back in the machine. The only other thing that I'd totally recommend if you use this type of tooling is to actually get yourself a quick change Dixon type tool post, particularly for the Chinese mini lathe. I've got one for the MyFed ML7 and the mini lathe. And you can leave each tool set up in the tool holders. And what I did over the years was just collect um, tool holders whenever I saw them cheap on eBay. And now I've got quite a variety of tools all set up and I can quickly use those tools and it makes um, things so much quicker on the lathe. So for those of you that are new to machining and engineering, I'm going to take a few of these tools out to the lathe now and show some basic operations and what these actual tools can be used for on the lathe. So you can see there in that example, the tool can be used for facing off, turning and then plunging straight in at the back here as if you were doing a, a thread undercut. And you can actually even just face down the shoulder like I showed and turn backwards or towards the tailstock. You can also use this tool for shallow decorative grooves.
I now have the left hand version of the same tool set up and this is a piece of 316 stainless steel and this tool can be used for facing down the back of shoulders or turning towards the tailstock. And again you can use this one for decorative grooves as well. So now I have the SDNCN1212 tool set up and the same piece of um, stainless steel. And this tool is great for just plunging straight into the diameter of um, work. And you can cut both ways with it. And obviously it gives a chamfer on um, either side. So you can use it for decorative grooves or maybe even uh, deeper grooves for something else. And you can actually use it on the diameter or you can actually plunge into the face of work with it as well. And you can see there that the inserts in this tool handle the stainless steel perfectly. So now I've turned the tool round in the tool holder and put it on the other side and I'll show you that it can actually go in the face and do decorative grooves in that face. So it's a great tool for marking faces like this as well or doing decorative grooves in the face like that. So now I've put the 1.5mm wide groove tool up and I'll show you what this one can do. Also when you're setting the centre height on these tools you can actually make a, um, a gauge up and use a clock. But my method is just using a old rule. You want one that's um, reasonably thick, so it's nice and straight, not too bendy. And then you put it in between the tool and the diameter of the work and wind the um, insert onto that rule. If it pushes over at the top, um, so it's not upright, it's pushing over at the top like that one is now, that means the tool is too high. So, I'll let the one down a little bit. And 
and now that one's dead upright so I know that the tool is on centre. If it was too low the rule would go over that way. And like I said earlier this type of tool is excellent for doing o-ring grooves or circlip grooves or any other grooves really and it's also great for parting off work. And these types of tools are the actual ones that I use for all um, external o-ring work. And this external one, like I say, is great for parting off small components. And when you're using a tool like this on the Chinese mini lathe, it's best to have the compound slide locked up, um, plus use the carriage lock. I didn't actually use it on that cut there, so you can see how good the tool is cutting. And um, if you do have a carriage lock, like I say, use it for parting off and doing grooves, and you won't have any problems at all. So if you're new to engineering and machining, that is just some of the basic operations these tools can do on the lathe. And I really think they are the best tools to actually buy to start with. They're very low cost, as you'll see in the links below. And like I said, you won't uh, get rid of them over time. You'll use them, but you'll also add to them as you go. And like I did, if you buy these tools, you'll probably find that these are the ones that you mostly use on the lathe. 